Mike Dean, it's all about you. Liverpool 3, Newcastle United 1. This is the review. Take me home to the banks of the riverside. Take me home to the place that I call mine. It's a place I love best. Yes, it's better than the rest. Take me home to the banks of the riverside. Hi everybody, I'm Paul back again with another video and today's video was obviously the review from last night's uh, defeat at Anfield. Um, now I was there, um, I saw everything firsthand, and I have to say, um, you know when Mike Dean was appointed uh, as referee for this game, everybody on social media knew what would happen. Everybody said there would be an incident in the game or a couple of incidents in the game uh, that really made him stand out above everybody else because it's all about him constantly. It's all about this referee. Now, the fact that he's from the Wirral, uh, his sons are season ticket holders. I believe that he even has shares in the club. I think it's disgraceful that he was even appointed um, as referee. But this this happens, all right? This happens on a regular basis, especially to Newcastle United. So, anyway, the team lineup was a little bit different. Um, quite surprising, in a way, that uh, Callum Wilson was left out. Now, uh, we know that Callum Wilson is on a yellow card. He's one away from being suspended. So I think Eddie Howe wanted him just to stay back for the uh, the Man City game on Sunday, which is fair enough. Um, now, you know, when you look at the team lineup, we had Fraser coming in. We had uh, uh, Jacob Murphy coming in as well. He replaced Almiron. But ASM was given a sort of free roll up front uh, with Joe Linton holding, ba holding back a little bit um, to help out the midfield, which Isaac Hayden returned into as well. Uh, now... The game kicked off and obviously Liverpool are going to have plenty of possession at Anfield. You know, they dominate possession against most teams that come to this stadium, okay? So, I thought we did okay. It was a, it was a decent start, you know, we were holding them back. I mean, Dubravka had to make a couple of saves, nothing exceptional. Um, certainly nothing difficult for him to make. Um, and then we go down the other end. Uh, great run from St. Maximan and then it, the ball eventually comes uh, to John Joe Shelby. And finally, you know, he's been... Certainly threatening to do this for a while. A brilliant finish and absolute scenes in the away end. Absolute scenes. It was worth, you know what? It was worth the journey just for those scenes when we scored the goal. Um, people were lifting each other over shoulders. It was just incredible. Uh, and once again, the Newcastle United support was just unbelievable. Absolutely incredible. And, you know, for all that Anfield has this amazing atmosphere, uh, you know, yes, when they came out to start the game, the, you'll never walk alone. Um, brilliantly, it, it, you know, fantastic atmosphere. But my God, it goes quiet after that. And, and the Liverpool fans were, were very, very quiet. I was, you know, my first time at Anfield, and I have to say it was, it was quieter than I thought it would be. Even though that, um, you know, where they are in the league, the team they've got... I mean, what we would do as Newcastle United fans to have any sort of team like that, it would be uh, it would be incredible, to be fair. Um, but then came the game's first major talking point. Um, I think it was a corner that Liverpool had. Um, two Newcastle players go up. Uh, Shar and Hayden, I think it was. Hayden goes down, um, holding his head. Now, many people have said that he, he looked up to see what was around. I think, he, I think that was just a reaction. I don't think he looked up to see who was around and then feign injury I don't think that happened all right but that's just my opinion okay but Hayden stays down holding his head now the referees have been told uh because of because of safety reasons any head injury or suspected head injury you have to blow the whistle and stop the game so Hayden is holding his head now whether he's feigning or not it doesn't matter he's holding his head so that is a suspected head injury therefore you have to blow the whistle now, Mike Dean had lots of time before that ball even came into the box to blow the whistle. No linesman flag, no nothing. The game kept continuing. Salah gets it out on the on the right-hand side. He floats the ball in. Terrible marking, you have to say. But we've got a man down. The ball falls to Jota, who is right next to Hayden, who is holding his head. And, you know, Dubravka makes some unbelievable saves before Jota eventually puts it in. But the goal shouldn't have stood, guys. It just shouldn't have. You know, I'm not. It's not, you know, bit a pill or anything like that. We, I think Liverpool would have beaten us anyway had they not scored there anyway. It doesn't matter for me. Um, I felt there was always a, an extra gear Liverpool could have gone up to during that game. 
Um, that's not to take anything away from us, though, because I thought the effort last night was absolutely superb. I thought the work rate, the, the way we were getting into tackles, I thought we were we were really, really good. There's a couple of players didn't perform for me. Um, but Liverpool then have the momentum. That is the thing. When they scored the goal, the momentum was back up, and then they go, John Joe Shelby makes a mistake, uh, which, you know, he, he had the balls to admit in an interview after the game that it was his mistake. Um, Liverpool then had a chance with Jota and it felt uh, uh, more Salah and of course he's not going to miss from there um, so 2-1 and you're thinking right this could be a cricket score the momentum was with Liverpool we all knew or were expecting an absolute hide in the Danfield but it didn't materialise we kept our heads up which we didn't do at Leicester the other day we kept our heads up and we kept working and yes Liverpool will have loads of possession it, it's got to happen it, 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 it will happen at Anfield we knew it was but it was how we would respond. I mean, I think we responded really well. Uh, the lads gave everything they could last night. Joe Linton again, all over the pitch, winning footballs. Um, yes, he didn't create anything, but you know what? His work rate is incredible to, to win tackles and stuff like that. He's coming back and helping out the defence. You know, we lost Jamal Lewis in the first half to a hamstring injury, so he's going to be out for a while. Um, St. Maximan got injured in the second half. Now, you know what? He went on some mazy runs last night. He did cause a few problems. But again, there's no final sodden product. Uh, there was a time in the second half he, when he eventually did shoot. Uh, I think it was Allison made a good save down to his right. But he could have laid it off on numerous occasions uh, for, for players in better positions uh, to have a chance on goal. But you know what? That's by the by. I mean, it, at least we got shots in. Um, so it wasn't all bad. And then, of course, Trent Alexander-Arnold finishes it off. Uh, and we've all seen the pictures. We've all seen Mike Dean cut right across in front. What is he doing there? There's no reason for the referee to be there. Absolutely none at all. There is no reason for Mike Dean to be in that situation when Trent, and Trent hit that ball. None. He did not have to be there. He should have been somewhere else. He should have been at least 10 yards away from the ball. There was no reason for Mike Dean to be there. And of course, Dubravka is, is quite... Clearly on the photo, he didn't see it till late, but it was a cracking shot. Let's not take anything away from Trent Alexander-Arnold. It was a wonderful strike, but we know he can do that. Um, so 3-1, uh, the fans, as usual, we kept singing, we kept going. Um, but like I said, there was a couple of players for me who just didn't perform last night. One was Isaac Hayden. Um, big opportunity for Isaac Hayden to, to, to make a statement to be in the Newcastle United midfield, but he gave away the ball so many times yesterday. So many times. Little, even one-yard passes, he was giving it straight to Liverpool players. So I don't understand what's gone wrong with Isaac Hayden. I really don't. And uh, Fabian Scher was just all over the place last night, I have to say. You know, I'm a big fan of his. But last night, I'm sorry, it was one of his worst games for us. You know, his passing was dreadful. You know, trying to clear, you know, making passes out of defence to absolutely nobody. And then, of course, you know, a couple of defensive errors. And then he takes a free kick in the second half when we're 2 1 down. Chance to get the, the guys in the box. And he sees Allison off his line and he tries to chip him. It's never going to happen. And you could see the frustration on the rest of the players' faces thinking, what the hell have you just done that for? We have an opportunity to get a goal. But anyway, you know, I'm not going to sort of nitpick at all the players because I thought the work rate was tremendous. You know, even the players that didn't play too well still worked their asses off. Um, but one player who really pissed me off yesterday and pissed a lot of Newcastle United fans off was Joe Willock. Um, now, when the players were warming up down the side of the pitch, you know, we were all singing the names like Almiron, Wilson, etc. And they all applauded the fans. Willock, not once. Not once did he acknowledge the fans, okay? Then, after he'd come on a substitute, he then walks straight off the pitch. No clapping to the Newcastle United fans. He just walks straight off. The rest of the team and the coaching staff come right up to the away end and applaud us for about two or three minutes. We were singing back to them. They were standing clapping us. Because we did appreciate the effort that that team put in yesterday. Far different from the performance that we saw at Leicester on Sunday. There was effort and there was passion for the shirt yesterday. Amongst all of the players that were on the pitch. Apart from Willock, who was only on for a short time, but it just wasn't good enough from him the way he just walked off. I thought that was very disappointing. And something for me is not quite right with Joe Willock. Um, he just doesn't look happy at all at the club. Now, a lot of theories have come about that maybe last season he was trying for a contract at Arsenal and not Newcastle. 
Um, but once he found out that his future wasn't with Arsenal, Newcastle was his only option. But, you know, it's starting to become clear now that that is something not right with Willock. And the fact that he disappeared off the pitch so quickly, didn't even come over to the fans, who, by the way, sang our hearts out again last night. And that came across clearly on the TV, I believe, as well. But to not even acknowledge them is, is quite disgusting. And I hope anyhow picks that up with him. Because the rest of the lads came over and stood in front of us for two, three, four minutes, just clapping us, and we clapped back to them. That's the connection we kind of need with the football club, with the players. And I, I loved seeing that. You could tell the players were really disappointed because they'd lost the game of football. But I think they got the message from the Newcastle fans last night saying, thank you for your efforts tonight because you truly did work your asses off. And had situations been a, diff a, a little bit different, maybe we could have got a point. But I'm of the belief that Liverpool didn't really um, step up all the gears last night and, and could have if they wanted to. But that, that's because they're such a quality side and with quality players. But Mike Dean, um, he should never, ever, ever be seen refereeing a Premier League game. I mean, how he was given this game is still bewildering to us. Um, of course, you've got the corruption now coming coming back again. You know, I, I've laughed it off in recent weeks. I really have. I, I must admit, I've laughed it off. But when you see continuous games and you see referees making these absolutely incredible decisions which aren't in the rules, then there's no VAR. I mean, look, Arsenal got a penalty against West Ham for a lot of... For a very similar sort of challenge that Trent Alexander-Arnold made yesterday on Callum Wilson. When the ball was played through to him. Yes, he got a slight touch on the ball. But why? Why isn't that going to VAR? Why is it only the big teams that are getting those decisions going to VAR? It's, it's wrong. So you have to start thinking, what is going on here? Mike Dean yesterday, when we were shouting at Mike Dean... We were shouting, Mike Dean, it's all about you. He turned to the Newcastle United fans and started doing this. You know, he was he was goading us. Apprenticeship referee. That needs to be picked up. I mean, it's just disgusting his actions on the pitch. And he shouldn't have been anywhere near Trent Alexander-Arnold when he hit that ball last night. As fantastic a goal as it was, not taking anything away from him, he should not have been in that position as a referee. But I thought, you know, there's a lot of positives to take from that game. Now, if we know there's a problem with Pep Guardiola with an in, in um, he's had a coronavirus test and it's inconclusive, so we don't know. But the game looks like it's going ahead on Sunday, so the players will take a lot of positivity from that. A lot of positivity from that nice performance. There's no doubt about that. And hopefully they'll take that into Sunday's game. But it looks like Lewis will be out for a while, and probably St. Maximan will be missing because he limped off. But you know what? We'll see what happens on Sunday. But the thing is, we all need to stick together here as fans because there's clearly there clearly is something going on about the fact that they want Newcastle out of the league. I'm in no doubt about that now. After you know, I laughed at some some people making that uh, assumption, but you know, after seeing you know last night again, the refereeing on Sunday, the lack of VAR for our decisions, you've got to start thinking that something isn't quite right here. But. We all stick together. The lads gave us everything last night and I couldn't have asked for any more. So that's my review. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the match. You know, do you think there's anything going on behind the scenes um, in order to make Newcastle United go further down the leagues, uh, disappear from the Premier League because we're clearly not wanted? Um, so we need to get some players in in January, stay in the league and stick it right up the backsides as far as I'm concerned. Um, but let me know in the comments what you thought. If you have enjoyed the video, as usual, guys, please do hit the like button for me. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Almost at 7,000 now, which will be brilliant. So thank you to everybody that has recently subscribed. Um, enjoy your weekend. Uh, I'll be back with a preview of the Man City game with Dave, probably uh, for an hour on Saturday night. And then we take on Man City on Sunday. So have a cracking weekend, whatever you do, guys. Stay safe out there, and I'll catch you soon. Take care. Oh! <laughs>